In this video, we're going to cover for the techniques uh, used in medieval Islamic bookbinding, we're going to cover the um, how to do the boards for the envelope flap and the forage flap if desired. Um, the forage flap board stiffener is optional, envelope flap board not so much. So, I've got my book, I've got um, extra pieces of the cover board material, and then I made myself a template. Uh, for the envelope flap board because I've been doing a lot of these books this size so it's been helpful for me. Um, it's also useful in that it's a different color so I can show it more easily in the video. Um, so I looked at a whole lot of different existing books and from what I could tell for the most part the envelope flap boards cover approximately a third the width of the book. Um, they're the same height as the book and they cover roughly a third the width of the book. Uh, most of the books I looked at tended to be portrait format. Um, I know that they did have landscape format ones, and I didn't see any of those, so I don't know if it follows the one-third rule as well. Um, really, honestly, aesthetics seems to be a, a primary thing, so if it meets the function and looks pretty, then I say go for it. Um, another thing that's, that's worthy of note is that they always had some flat distance, top and bottom, before it started curving down to the point. It never went from the point to the corner uh, as a triangle. It was always this pentagonal shape. Um, how much of this, how wide this was, seemed to vary. I picked an inch because an inch is a nice, easy measurement. Um, and then from that line connecting these two points to the point is about five-eighths of an inch for, for me. And then I, I basically just drew a line connecting the points. Uh, again, as long as it's functional and looks pretty, it, you're good to go. So I will just place my template on a piece of coverboard material, line up the, the straight edge, and then draw the slopey edges, and then take a ruler or a straight edge of some kind. Um, in my case, I'm using a small quilter square. Uh, you can use an X-Acto knife, or I'm using my rolly cutter because I can. Um, and then to make it easier, I will actually go past the point. Um, sometimes I'll even just continue this line all the way over, especially if I have enough room over here for a second envelope flat board, because then all I have to do is cut the second line and the straight edge. But this one doesn't have room for it, so I'm not going to worry about cutting it all the way across. I'm just cutting it slightly past because otherwise trying to get the corner exactly lined up is usually requires an exacto knife. Um, and as with cutting any kind of pasteboard, like I talked about in the, the video for the cutting the front and back cover board, um, multiple lighter passes is better. Once you cut a couple, you've got a nice groove going on. And continue tracing over it until you've got your envelope flap. Set that aside. So for the forage flap, you have options. You don't have, you will have a forage flap regardless, but it doesn't have to be stiffened by a cover board. For instance, this one isn't. It makes it more flexible, um, which I like. Um, for the, the skinnier books like this, you really don't need a flap there. If we were working on a much thicker book, a flap, a, a board in the flap would be helpful. Um, this one has it. So, there is a little bit less flexibility, but it, it's not necessary. It still works. Um, I just find it easier when I'm doing this cloth portion of the doubler, which we'll get into in a later video. Um, but I find it easier when I'm doing the cloth one to not have a board in the middle there. So if I know I'm doing that, I won't cut the, the four-edge flap board. If I'm doing paper, though, paper kind of needs one. So, so give some thought when you're doing this as to whether or not what kind of doubler you plan to do. Um, if you're doing a leather doubler, again, we'll talk about it more, but you, you wouldn't necessarily need one. So um, I'll show you how to make one. Basically, take your book. Um, so the four-edge flap board only covers the actual four-edge of the book. It doesn't cover the, the front or back 
covers. Um, so it's going to fit. See if I can show. It's going to fit here. It's not going to overlap the the front or the back cover. It's going to rest kind of in inside of them. If that makes sense. Um, so an easy way to to measure how how much you need. Take an extra piece of coverboard material, set it down, line up perpendicular your your, uh, your coverboard material you're going to cut your flap from, and trace a line along the top edge of the paper. Um, if you don't have a random piece of scrap, although you should because you'd have, you should have your envelope flap, you can also just take the book, fold it over, and then put it flat on your, your cutting board. And then you would just take your, your straight edge and whatever cutting thing you're using and cut out that thin strip. Um, I guess I can demonstrate it even though for this book I'm not going to use it. So, got my line. And then I, I tend to line it up on one of the, the lines on my quilting square just to make sure that I've got it as perpendicular as I, I can. Like I said, for these it's really skinny and hard to tell. If we were doing like a thicker book, it would make more sense and be easier to kind of measure that. And then do a couple to set the groove. Take away my filter square. And yes, I could probably have just measured it from the other direction, but. I'm, I tend to be worried about accidentally slicing off the quilter square and into, I'd rather cut into scrap than into the piece I actually care about. So, when we're laying out our book on the cover, what it will end up looking like is, and these gaps are slightly exaggerated so you can actually see them, but only, only slightly. There we go. So these gaps here and here will be the width of your coverboard material and it's so that when things fold up this folds to the inside and doesn't overlap with your coverboard material and same same with your envelope flap so that's how you cut the four edge and envelope flap coverboards uh, the next video should be how to uh, glue everything to your cover Thanks.